Good morning. Welcome to lecture number 33 of JNR 607 Principles of Satellite Image Processing. I am Professor B. Krishnamohan from CSRE IIT Bombay. Okay, let us continue our discussion of working with multiple bands at a time. We have seen how we could use uh, color images and enhance the color okay so that is working with three bands at a time purely for visual appearance on the monitor and we'll use the discussion further for various other applications for instance if we can capture the redundancy in a given multi band data we can uh, devise appropriate transformation for discarding part of the data for reduced data volume. We can also use these transformations as a means for merging different data sets. Okay? The transformation makes it simpler. Okay, first, we will look at the uh, dimensionality aspect of it. Okay, so whenever you have remote sensing data captured in different visible bands, different infrared bands, band to band there will be a considerable amount of similarity. Okay, this you would have already seen. So it means, in other words, that if you know the pixel value in one band, you will know to a reasonable extent what the value would be in an adjoining band. Okay, so, in other words, there is interband correlation. So, maybe in one band, if the values increase, in the other band also the values might increase. If there is negative correlation, values in one band increase, in the other band they decrease. But, there is a predictability among the uh, data in different bands. Okay, we have looked at this example. Suppose we have two dimensional data marked by two variables B1 and B2. There is negative correlation in the data so that values in one band are low, in the other band they will be high and vice versa. Okay, so, what you can see here is that there is a fair bit of predictability. If B1 is high, you will know for sure B2 is low and if B2 is high, you know B1 will be low. So, if you fit a regression line and use it as a coordinate axis along this line, if you project all the data points onto it, you will see very high variance among the data points on this line. Okay. So, along the B1 prime axis, you have very small values and then you have some very large values also along this line. And if you draw B2 prime as perpendicular to B1 prime, along this axis the variance is very, very small. Okay. The range of values is quite small. So, if you are prepared to incur an error that is discard the value variation along the B2 prime axis and keep only B1 prime, then you are saving 50 percent data storage. So, what is the B1 prime line that is what is its slope, what angle it makes with x axis if you know that and then all the values on the B1 prime axis that will be enough for you. But the spread around the B1 prime line will be lost because you are discarding the values on along the B2 prime axis. So, there is a small error introduced into the data that is the cost you are paying, but the gain is you have nearly 50 percent reduction in the amount of data you carry to represent the same points. 
yeah. same data points here originally you were storing for every point the value of B1 and value of B2 and instead by projecting them onto this line you are say storing the values only along B1 prime line and you are all you need is just two more parameters for B1 prime it is slope and offset. Okay. So, this is something like a lossy compression that is loss means loss of accuracy a slight loss of accuracy, but you are compressing the data okay, from two parameters per point to one parameter per point. So, in a general situation how do we determine what are these new axes onto which we can project the data and in turn rank the axis in terms of the amount of variance. Okay. So, here you can estimate what would be the variance along B1 prime and along B2 prime and you know which one will be higher. Now analytically can you do something when you do not know in high dimensional space you cannot visually determine you cannot plot this okay, regression line. And the third thing is if you want to transform the data and if you want to come back do you have an invertible transformation that also you want to know. Okay. So, let us just first get some formulae for us if you have a set of data multi dimensional data you have a mean vector add up all the data elements divide by the number of elements you get the mean vector and along any band you have the variance and between pairs of bands you have a covariance. Yeah. Per band you have variance between pairs of bands you have covariance and you have a mean vector right. So, these are some useful statistics. and we know what covariance actually tells us covariance mat is a matrix given by whose size is given by the number of bands for k band data covariance matrix is of size k by k on the diagonal you see the variances of individual bands of diagonal elements will give you the covariances and since covariance property is symmetric covariance matrix is also symmetric and if you have the data which is all real that is we are not going into microwave data where you have amplitude and phase together represented in terms of complex numbers. Here simple optical data everything is real covariance matrix will be real and symmetric and real symmetric matrices are really helpful because of ease of extracting information from them. Okay. Likewise we can also get the interband correlation and we can relate correlation with covariance. Okay. So, correlation is covariance plus product of the mean vectors means. So, if the data is of 0 mean covariance and correlation are the same. So, now let us try to pose a problem like this that we are given multi dimensional data with redundancy or interband correlation 
we want to determine if they can be projected onto a different set of axes for the purpose of reducing the data volume. So, we want a transformation and this transformation should be such that in the transform domain each coordinate axis should be ranked in terms of its importance. Okay. Now, whenever we say we are moving to a new coordinate system, it means that we need to specify the unit vectors along those axes. Okay. If we say x y plane, essentially we have two unit vectors 1 0 and 0 1. Okay. That is all any point can be expressed in terms of these two unit vectors. Same way if you have a new coordinate system, what are the unit vectors for each of the new coordinate axis that is what we need to know. So, if we have such coordinate axis represented by V, V1, V2, V3 etcetera. So, if we project our input data vector x onto one such onto the kth transformed axis then the value of x along this projected onto this axis will be given by z k. Okay. So, suppose as we said this is b 1, this is b 2. So, suppose this is b 1 prime and this is b 2 prime and you had say a point here. Suppose you had a point here say b 1 1 and b 2 1. Okay. So, this projection will give you b 1 1 and this projection will give you b 2 1. Yes, that is what it meant right. If you have x y coordinates means x coordinate is the projection of that vector onto x axis and the y coordinate is projection onto y axis. Now, instead what will be the projection onto these axes. Okay, so, this will be b 1 1 prime and this will be 2 1 prime. Yep. So, this z k is like our b 1 1 prime or b 2 1 prime. So, you may have several new axes out of which you have the kth axis whose unit vector is v k. Okay, so, projecting x onto this means v k transpose x. Okay, so, the result is z k. So, like here this length is given by b 1 1 prime. Okay, so, we want to determine these axes in such a way that the z case that the variance of the z case should be a maximum that is the range of values along any projected axis any new axis should be as large as possible only then that axis is useful. If all of them get concentrated on say some uh, small range then you can say that okay, all values on this axis are can be substituted by a single constant. So, that axis is not really important. 
So our task is we are given the multiband data and we need to determine these axes. Okay. So ZK equal to VK transpose X. Now we want to determine the variance of ZK. Let us drop the substitute with the subscript K for the time being. Okay. So that it is less cluttered. If you want uh, write the variance of this, okay, you can easily see that it comes out to be V transpose C V. Okay, so what you are doing is you are writing the expression for variance of ZK in terms of these quantities. So you have a familiar looking expression sigma z square is V transpose C V. Okay. And now we want this to be maximized. If we are maximizing this, it means if you take the derivative, derivative should be equal to 0. So what is the unknown here? Unknown is V. C is the covariance matrix of your input data. If you look at this inside thing, xij minus mu k and xij minus mu l transpose, this thing is the covariance between bands k and l. Okay. So, essentially the variance of z k square can be expressed in terms of this quantity. As you can see this will be a scalar. V is a vector, 1D vector, V transpose multiplied by C multiplied by V will result in a scalar quantity. Okay. So, this scalar quantity we now we are differentiating a scalar quantity with respect to a vector. Now, we also want to guarantee that these vectors are unit vectors. So, unit vector means V transpose V equal to 1. Yeah. So, this is a constraint for us. Among all possible vectors V, we want to determine, we want to find those whose magnitude is equal to 1. So, this will be a constraint. So, we are differentiating with respect to V the quantity V transpose C V subject to the constraint that if the magnitude of V deviates from 1, we are not reaching the maximum. Okay. So, when V transpose V is actually equal to 1, this quantity will disappear. Okay, so, this is called constraint optimization basically. We are trying to maximize a quantity subject to a constraint. So, lambda is called Lagrange multiplier. So, if you differentiate and equate the result to 0, all of a sudden we get a beautiful very familiar equation C v equal to lambda v. So, which vectors satisfy this relation? Eigen vectors of C. Since C is real symmetric matrix, the vectors v are orthogonal and we have also imposed the condition that they should be ortho normal unit magnitude. And all of a sudden, the lambda also gets a meaning now. We said V transpose V is variance sigma z square. Okay. So, what is V transpose C V? V transpose lambda V, that is lambda times V transpose V, V transpose V is 1. So, the variance is given by lambda. 
So, if you have say k band data, there will be k eigenvalues and each of these eigenvalues is the variance along the axis given by the eigenvectors of the covariance matrix. In other words, just compute the eigenvectors of the covariance matrix of your input data, use them as the new axis. You can project your data onto these new axis, you will get new images and the variance in the transformed along the transformed axis or variance of the new bands, new band images will reduce according to the magnitude of the eigenvalues. So, some eigenvector will have corresponding largest eigenvalue than another eigenvector with the second largest eigenvalue and so on. Okay, so, the alternate explanation is find a transformation which diagonalizes the input covariance matrix okay. and the diagonalized covariance matrix what do you have on the diagonal you have the variances which are the same as the eigenvalues. Okay. I do not know if Professor Porwal had discussed it in the class, yeah, that is the alternate explanation. So, you simply diagonalize your input covariance matrix. So, you pre multiply with one matrix, post multiply with another matrix and the matrix will be composed of eigenvectors of the, this is also called a similarity transformation, diagonalization of a matrix. So, essentially we have reached the same point, we find if you want to decorrelate our input data, there should be 0 interband correlation. So, the covariance matrix has to become diagonal, all off diagonal elements should disappear, right. And if we do it, if we use the eigenvectors and project our input data onto these axes represented by the eigenvectors, we will get decreasing variance along different axes. We can rank them basically. Project the data on, for example, take the situation here. I had a covariance matrix, these are the eigenvalues and these are the eigenvectors. So, the first eigenvector has a corresponding eigenvalue which is very large okay. and when you come to the last one, the variance is very low. So, if I create a new image from the multiband, four band input image, if I project that onto this axis given by this eigenvector. So, I will get a new image, single image with a variance given by 253. The second one will give me approximately 8, the third one approximately 4 and the fourth one less than 1. So, this transformation gives us what are called principal components. Okay. So, the first principal component will have the highest variance, second principal component will have the second highest variance and so on. Okay, so, if you are to do this computation, what would you do? For every pixel, as in this case, you have four element vector associated with it because it is four band image at every pixel you have four values, value in band 1, 2, 3 and 4. 
so that vector take dot product with the first eigen vector so as you do it for all the pixels you will get a single band image that is your first principal component now again the same input pixel vectors you take dot product with the second eigen vector so you will get a second this the second principal component image and so on second third fourth etc now if you compute the variance of these new images the variance will be equal to the eigen values of the covariance matrix so if any image has a very low variance what does it mean all the values are concentrated at the mean there is no change at all if all pixels are same we don't need to bother about them. okay second example six band data i think this must be the landsat image you use in your lamp these are the eigen values from 3 nearly 3800 it's coming to 2.25 so there is tremendous amount of correlation among the bands if there is high correlation among the bands the range of eigen values will be very large okay if the values are close together eigen values are close together it means that there isn't much correlation in the data it's a thumb rule for you the first eigen value to last eigen value if the range is very high it means that there is lot of correlation in the data which means that there is scope for data reduction if you like okay. so when you compute using matlab or erdas whatever first the covariance matrix then the eigen values then the eigen vectors and now in turn you will get the principal component images so first principal component means dot product of pixel vector with eigen vector corresponding to the largest eigen value you do it using all the pixel vectors so first principal component is a single band image second principal component is another single band image and so on so for whatever is the number of bands of input data you have that many principal components you will generate okay so the lower order principal components which have very little variance you can afford to discard so the utility of the principal component gradually decreases from first towards the last okay so depending on different data sets you know how many uh, bands after transformation how many principal components can be ignored depends on the data for instance say the visible band and infrared band generally they carry complementary information okay so if you have just two bands one visible one infrared you can't really discard any of them but if you have several bands in the visible region several infrared then there will be scope for data reduction so principal component transform allows you to reduce the data volume and you can also use the principal components for increasing the contrast decorrelation contrast enhancement is one method where you make use of principal components okay first the standard principal component transformation the landsat image first band blue then green red you can see that there is lot of similarity among the bands except some brightness change there is lot of similarity and then infrared very different again second and third infrared band okay so thermal band is not there six band data and this is the first principal component 
usually first principal component captures the natural features and second principal component usually highlights the man made features. Third one we can see them noise Okay, images appear very grainy and this is the last one. Now if any of you were keenly observing I said the last principal component has very little variance and if you look at this image it has considerable variance. How? This is contrast stretch for display purpose. See, you have small values, but them you can still contrast enhance contrast stretch them so that you can display them on the monitor. So, if you turn off the contrast enhancement, this will have very small variance, um, something like 2.25 or whatever we saw. Likewise, this also has much less variance than the first two principal components, but again this is contrast stretched. If you observed the eigenvectors had positive and negative elements, okay. With respect to the original origin, okay, the new axis have you know the unit vectors may be going on all side both sides of 0. So, if you want to display the data you have to you know shift the negative values to positive or take the largest negative largest positive determine the range and rescale it to 0 to 255 for display purpose. So, this is the input image FCC after decorrelation enhancement you can see some parts of the image have greater contrast with the surroundings. But let us just look at what is the concept of decorrelation stretch that is principal component transform used for contrast enhancement. Since we know that the lower order principal components have low variance, it means that contrast is less, right, in those bands. So, contrast enhancement is applied to the lower order principal components, and then you transform the whole data back to the original coordinate system. And then you can form your color composites. So, before and after decorrelation stretch this is aster sensor image band 6, 7 and 9. Okay, you can see the amount of you know visible detail here. Here the contrast is poor because these bands had relatively similar values in all the three bands, band 6, 7 and 9 that is why this is almost looking like a black and white image. So, what is done is the 3 by 3 covariance matrix is computed, the principal components are determined and the lower order principal component is contrast stretched. Then you apply an inverse how, how the uh, inverse transform is done we will have a look, but this is essentially what is done the lower order principal components are contrast stretch and an inverse principal component transform is applied. Okay, you have the reference here if you like. A second example again you have the reference. So, compared to the original you can see visually you can distinguish between different parts okay, with much greater ease. Okay, so, 
what is meant by inverse principal component transform. Forward transform we know inverse transform means essentially go back from the transformed coordinates back to the original coordinates. So, you multiply the input data with some matrix pre and post multiplied with some matrix then you need to do that with a different set of matrices. So, suppose input that is original data suppose it is k by k p c t suppose you take k 1 cross k 1. So, inverse p c t will give you back k by k. So, suppose out of 6 bands you kept only 3 principal components. So, k 1 is 3, but when you apply the inverse p c t you should get back your 6 cross I mean 6 band. So, inverse p c t will give you approximation of the input data. If you have dropped any bands, any principal components, the inverse p c t will give you an approximation of the input data. If you have kept all the principal components, the result will be identical. So, suppose you have the matrix pre multiplying matrix x is your original uh, pixel vector and you have projected it on to different eigen vectors and this is your p c t vector. So, if you kept all the principal components every element is again a vector right. In the original suppose 6 band original data this is 6 element vector. Now, after transforming this is also a 6 element vector ok or if you had discarded some principal components this will be accordingly smaller in size. Suppose 6 band data you reduced it to 3 principal components. So, this will be like 3 by 6 matrix multiplied by 6 by 1 vector will give you a 3 by 1 vector. So, you now know how to get back to the original number of bands through inverse principal component transform, it is pretty straightforward. So, in order to get the principal components what are you doing? This is eigen vector 1, 2, 3 and so on k and this is your input pixel vector x. So, first eigen vector into x will give you the first element right. So, so y vector y is y 1, y 2 and so on y k. Now, suppose k 1 plus 1 to k th eigen vector are ignored. So, only k 1 principal components are retained. Then we can say vector so vector y 1 essentially you are leaving out some eigen vectors. So, suppose this is k 1. So, these many eigen vectors are discarded. 
okay first eigen vector dot product with the input pixel will give you first element y1 second eigen vector dot product with x will give you second element and so on up to the k1 at eigen vector so the last few are thrown away if you are not taking all the principal components right so now so vector y1 is equal to so in the first case this is a k by k matrix this is k by 1 vector this is also k by 1 vector now y1 this is given by say eigen vector e1 e2 and so on e k1 so this in will be k1 by k matrix and this is k by 1 and this will be k 1 by 1. Okay. The dimensions are matching k 1 by k matrix multiplied by k by 1 vector will give you k 1 by 1 vector. Right. Now e 1, e 2 etcetera are mutually orthogonal orthonormal in fact now suppose a is an orthonormal matrix what is a a transpose identity matrix unit matrix it means a transpose equal to a inverse so using this property so what we do now is what we'll do is we'll take transpose of this E1, E2, etc., EK1 into Y1, sorry, Y, yeah, vector Y1. This will give us, so this is what is the size of this? K by K1, this is K1 by 1. So you will get some approximation of x this will be of size k by 1 yeah is it clear what we are doing we computed the original eigen vectors we kept as many principal components as we wanted it means that we used as many eigen vectors as we wanted discarded the rest of the eigen vectors so our matrix had say only k1 eigen vectors as rows and these eigen vectors share the property that they are mutually orthonormal so now what we did is we pre multiplied both sides of uh, we pre multiplied both sides by a new matrix where the rows of this matrix will become columns okay so you'll get an identity matrix and what you get here is an approximation you won't get the original x but you'll get an approximation so you are constructing trying you are trying to reconstruct x from a reduced number of principal components so this is x transpose or in the slides I might have used the symbol x1. So x will be approximately equal to x1 if the discarded PCTs have very little information.
Okay. So this you can actually try uh, doing it in your lab if you have not already done. You can do the principal component transformation as well as inverse PCT uh, in your lab or you can do it fairly easily in MATLAB also. So you can keep for example start with two, two principal components and then see the inverse if there what is the difference between the original bands and the inverse PCT then three principal components four and so on. Now how do you see how do you compare the two then you have to take maybe pixel by pixel difference Euclidean difference between the pixel vectors and see what is the maximum difference you got between any pair of pixels in the original that is original and reconstructed or you can get the mean squared error. So you can use various kinds of measures to compare what, what would be the quality of the reconstructed uh, multi band image data you, from two principal components 3, 4 etc. You can use MSC, you can use you know PSNR peak signal to noise there are various ways of doing it but simplest would be between any pair of pixels what is the maximum difference you got okay. So x is a k element vector x1 is also a k element vector so pixel by pixel take Euclidean distance and see what is the maximum difference you are getting. Okay, we will take up the discussion of data fusion in the next class where you know different kinds of uh, transformations like color transform, principal component transform etc. they can be used to merge different data sets. For instance, the, this is the panchromatic image, this is the multispectral image. Okay low resolution multispectral high resolution pan and you can get a high resolution multispectral image like this by merging these two this high resolution pan and low resolution multispectral okay this comes under data fusion and we'll look at just one or two methods in this course and then more can be discussed in the subsequent course Okay, we stop here.